Good day everyone. I am Amanda Calado. I'm Eric Isberto. And I'm Christy Suceso and today we're going to discuss about the biography of a prominent Filipino. A prominent Filipino is said to be heroes who change Philippine history or the Filipino who has exemplary works or has the biggest contribution in the society. One of the prominent Filipino what comes to mind is of course Dr. Rizal. Rizal is one of our national heroes who used Blama to awaken the Filipino against the conquerors. And there is also Andres Bonifacio, Emilio Aguinaldo, and Emilio Jacinto. Most recently, Antonio Luna's heroes is really because of the in a recent film about his life. The Philippines does not have an official list of national heroes, while there has been an attempt to come up with one. The legislators declared finalized a list to avoid the surge of proclamations and debates involving historical controversies about heroes. Still, textbooks and flashcards don't hesitate to in ingrain their names in our minds. It's interesting how these historical figures all bred the same familiarity as superheroes. With students already knowing their names and achievements by heart by the time they reach high school. Thinking about the personalities, you can't help but notice a pattern. They are mostly men who fit into the typical hero mold of Machasmo and Balor, while historical books often devote entire chapters to the adventures and achievements of male heroes. Our female heroes are female heroes are often bunched into one section, treated as put notes or afterthoughts despite uh, also fighting for the nation freedom. Jose Rizal in full Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado y Alonso Rialonda, born June 19, 1861, Colombia, died December 30, 1896, Manila, Pat Patriot, physician and man of letters who was an inspiration to the Philippines nationalist movement. The son of prosperous landowner, Rizal was educated in Manila and at the University of Madrid. A brilliant medical student, he soon committed himself to the reformed Spanish rule in his home country, though he never advocated Philippines independence. Most of his writing was done in Europe, where he, re he resided between 1882 and 1892. In 1887, Rizal published his first novel, Nolimitang Hire, The Social Cancer, a passionate exposure, exposure of the evil of Spanish rule in the Philippines, a sequel, El Pelibus Terismo, 1891, the reign of Crete established his reputation as the leading spokesman of the Philippines reform movement. He published an unnoted edition 1890, reprinted in 1958, of Antonio Morgas' Successes de las Islas Filipinas, hoping to show that the native people of the Philippines had a long history before the coming of the Spaniards. He became the leader of the propaganda movement, contributing numerous articles to its newspaper, La Solidaridad, published in Barcelona. Results political program include integration of Philippines as a province of Spain, representation in the Cortes, the Spanish Parliament, the replacement of Spanish peers by Filipino priests, Filipino priests, 
freedom of a symbol and expression and equality of Filipinos and Spaniards before the law. Rizal returned to the Philippines in 1892. He founded a non-violent reform society, the Liga Filipina in Mindanao. He remained in exile for the next four years. In 1896, the Katipunan, a Filipino nationalist secret, secret society, revolted against Spain, although he had no connection with that organization and he had no part in the insurrection. Rizal was arrested and tried for sedition by the military. Found guilty, he was publicly executed by a firing squad in Manila. His, ma his martyrdom convinced Filipinos that there was no alternative to independence from Spain. On the eve of this execution, while conf confined in Fort Santiago, Rizal brought Artemo Edges last farewell, a masterpiece of 19th century Span Spanish birth. Next, Andres Bonifacio e de Castro. Andres Bonifacio was born on uh, November 30, 1863, to Santiago. Bonifacio and Catarina de Castro in Tundal, located in Manila, Philippines. He was a Filipino revolutionary hero who founded the Kataas-taas in Kagalang-galangan na Katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan or Katipunan as a, a secret society devoted to fighting the Spanish occupation of the Philippines. He was the first want to have a clear vision of what a Filipino nation should be. The father of the Filipino nation, he would later be known as Supremo, this thing, to change the history of the Filipino people. Bonifacio was not born and raised a plebeian. His mother was half Spanish and he was privately tortured by a certain Guillermo Osmeña. But things began to for him when his parents died when he was 14 years old, forcing him to quit his study and look after his five younger brothers and sisters. He earned a living as a craftsman, a seller of canes and fans, and then he became clerk an agent for a foreign commercial firm, claiming account and company. In spite of his lack of formal education, he taught himself to read and write in Spanish and Tagalog, and was actually so good at it that he later got a good he got a job as a clerk messenger for the German trading firms Pressel and Company. It was said that Bonifacio was interested in Western classic rational, rationalism and read the works of Victor Hugo, Rosa Rizal, and Eugene Su. He had a deep interest in reading books on the French Revolution and the, lip, the lips of the President of the United States and acquired a good understanding of the social historical process, although it must be argued that argued that the main thing of the main thing that made his later organizing activity successful would be his savvy to ap appropriate local consciousness and ancient Filipino accept the Katipunan inang bayan sanduko kapatiran kaginhawaan and ka tiho kati mawaan or kalayaan his passion for changing the flight of his countrymen under colonialism encouraged him to join the La Liga Filipina 
The Liga Filipina was organized in July 3, 1892 by Jose Rizal with the purpose of uniting the, the people under one compact homogeneous body, which is the nation, instituting reform, education, and cooperation, building the nation in the grassroots. Antonio Luna de San Pedro in Novicio Anchata. Antonio Luna was a Filipino scientist and soldier who lived in the late 19th century. His name is recognized primarily as the hot tempered general who fought against the United States in the Spanish American War and was eventually assassinated by his own soldier. But he was also widely recognized in the scientific community for his research of contagious, contagious diseases, his efforts for, to free the Philippines from American rule, and his pharmaceutical and environmental science finding both left their mark on his country. Antonio Luna early life. Understanding Luna's later life and accomplishment can be helped by learning about his early life and his education. The youngest of seven children, Luna was born in Binondo, the commercial district of Manila, on October 26, 1866. He possessed strong skill in chemistry and other science and in 1881 earned a Bachelor of Arts degree from the Ateneo Municipal de Manila. His college teacher recognized his aptitude in chemistry and encouraged him to study it further. He did study it along with literature at the University of Santo Tomas, where his easy essay entitled Dos Cuerpos Fundamentales de la Quemica, Two Fundamental Bodies of Chemistry, won first prize in a competition at the University of Santo Tomas. Luna also studied music, military science, and marksmanship. In 1886, Luna moved to Madrid where he earned a licentiate in pharmacies. He went on to earn, to earn a doctorate in pharmacies in 1890 and his doctoral examiners said he did extremely well. His 1893 doctoral thesis on malaria entitled El Hematosuario del Paludismo was favorable, recognized by both physician and medical scientists after completing his com after com Completing his doctorate, Luna moved on to Paris, where he researched bacteriology and histology at the Pasteur Institute and later to Belgium, where he studied medical chemistry. He studies and grants. After being given a grant of research in 1894 from the Spanish government, Luna moved back to his home of Manila. The grant was to be used to study tropical and communicable diseases. Antonio took a post as the chemist expert at the municipal laboratory of Manila, where he was the first person to conduct environmental science studies. These studies include researching the contents of several sources of water, which he found to be unfit to drink. He also was the first person who conducted a study on Philippines forensic science, studying human blood and how it could be used as evidence when investigations crime. Fencing, revolution, and politics. While juggling all his scientific research, Luna also often a fencing club in Manila and this is when his focus shifted. He learned about the secret society that existed in hopes of starting a Philippines revolution to gain independence from Spain. Once a society, society was called the Katipunan, which had begun in 
1892, though he did not think the Filipino were prepared to stage an actual revolution, his name became linked with the Katipunan and Anti-Spanish Revolutionary Society. When the Katipunan was discovered in 1896, Luna and his brother Juan were arrested and put in jail in Fort Santiago. Juan was later released, but Antonio was exiled to Spain in 1897 and put in prison in Madrid. Juan worked to have his brother released. However, his release was granted with a condition, condition that Antonio not leave Spain, by which he did not abide. During his time in prison, he had decided to join the revolution and after studying military science and strategy in several European cities, he returned to the Philippines in July 1898, moving up in the military. Luna quickly rose up the military ranks and was made a general. He started a military academy and became known as a strict disciplinarian, which made him rather unpopular among the soldiers he betrayed. He began a newspaper that was published daily with the goal of uniting the Philippine people around the ideas of becoming an independent nation. The paper, the paper was a huge success. December of 1898 brought the Treaty of Paris in which Spain turned control of the Philippines over the United States. The battle that followed between the Philippines and American armies was were horrific in subordination and confusion among Filipino troops and eventually caused Luna to resign as general. Though three weeks later, he returned to the army. On June 5, 1899, he was assassinated by physical force and stabbed by his own people. Filipino soldier whom Luna had either insulted, arrested, or disarmed for insubordination. Antonio Luna is known as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Filipino general. Emilio Aguinaldo Ipami In 1898, Emilio Aguinaldo as achieved independence of the Philippines from Spain and was elected the first president of the New Republic under the Marlalas Congress. He also led Philippines American War against U.S. resistance to Philippines independence. Aguinaldo died of a heart attack on February 6, 1964 in Quezon City, Philippines. Early Life Emilio Aguinaldo was born on March 22, 1869. In Kawit Cavite, Philippines, nicknamed Young Aguinaldo was the seventh of eight children. His parents were of Chinese and Tagalog descent. His father Carlos died. Carlos died when Aguinaldo was just nine years old. Widow, his mother Trinidad sent him to attend public school in Manila, having had to cut his study short at the uh, Colegio de San Juan de Latran due to a uh, cholera outbreak. Aguinaldo returned home to Kauai, where he developed a growing awareness of Filipino frustration with Spanish colonial troops. While serving as the head of barter in Manila, he joined the Pillar Lodge chapter of Freemasonry in 1895. The Freemasonry was a government and church band resistance group. It was through his rule as municipal captain of this fraternity that Aguinaldo met Andres Bonifacio, a key figure in the in the fight to overthrow the Spanish rule. Independence from Spain, eager to fight for the cause of Philippine independence in 1895, Aguinaldo talked up with a secret society of revolutionaries headed by fellow lodge member Andres Bonifacio. When the rival faction executed Bonifacio in 1897, Aguinaldo assumed total leadership of the revolution against Spain. 
By December 1897, Aguinaldo had managed to reach the truce of Biak Nabato with Spain. He and his rebels agreed to a surrendering of arms and accepted exile uh, to Hong Kong in exchange for amnesty, indemnity, and liberal reform. However, neither side gave up their end of the bargain. The Spanish government did not deliver full all the all that was promised and the rebels did not truly surrender arms. In fact, Aguinaldo's revolutionary used some of Spanish financial compensation to purchase a additional arm for the resistance. From Hong Kong, Aguinaldo also made arrangement to assist American fighting against Spain and the Spanish and the Spanish American War, as neither peace nor independence had been achieved in 1898, Aguinaldo returned to the Philippines to assume, to resume, to resume his revolution against Spanish rule. Back in Cavite, Aguinaldo first forcibly set up a provisional dictatorship after meeting with the Malolos Congress and drafting a constitution for a new republic on June 12, 1898, Aguinaldo at last declared Philippines independence. Announced reform his hometown of Cavite, uh, Aguinaldo proclamation put an end to force century of Philippines oppression under Spanish colonial rule in January of following years dressed in a white suit at Barasing Church in Malala City. Aguinaldo was sworn in as the first president of the new self-governed Philippines Republic. And the other prominent Filipino will discuss by Eric Esperto and Christine Sasso. Good day everyone, I am Eric Esperto and this is the continuation of the report from our topic, the biography of a prominent Filipino. So after Aguinaldo, we have Jose P. Laurel. Jose P. Laurel was known to be the president of the Papit Republic. He was elected as the third president of the Philippines by the National Assembly on September 25, 1943 and was inaugurated on October 14, 1943. Born on March 9, 1891 in the small town of Tanwan in Batangas. Jose Pilarel studied and received his law degree at the University of the Philippines in 1915 and at the Yale University in 1920. His first entry in politics was in 1925 when he was elected to the Philippine Senate in 1936. He was elected as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. When the Japanese individual country, Laurel was the only high-ranking would choose to remain in Manila. Raulel had been vocal in disapproval of the U.S. control and because of his often dislike of the U.S. government. The Japanese had given him numerous positions during its three-year reign. Laurel government didn't get the Filipino full support. During his first year, Laurel was shot twice by Filipino rebels, but by some miracle survived. After the war, he was charged with 32 counts for treason, but he never got into trial because of the general amnesty given in April 1948. In 1949, he ran again for president under the Nationalista Party, but was defeated by Elfijo Quirino, a standard bearer of the rebeller party. Upon his losing the presidency, he was later elected as senator and as a delegate to the Constitutional Convention. He was recognized because of his support for women's freedom and rights, and his assistance in the Bill of Rights of the Constitution. When Magsaysay sat a president in 1955, Laurel became a lead of an economic mission of the United States. 
His job was to enhance and develop the relationship between the Philippines and the United States. In 1957, he retired from the political arena and led a journal life with his former wife, Pacencia Hidalgo. Jose Laurel died on November 5, 1959. Contribution and Achievements Since the early 1960s, Laurel considered a legitimate president of the Philippines. Organized Kalibapi, Kapisanan sa Paglilingkod sa Bagong Pilipinas or Association for Service of the New Philippines, a provisional government during Japanese occupation, declared martial law and war between the Philippines and the U.S. or United Kingdom in 1944, with his family established the Lyceum of the Philippines. Second one is Carlos P. Garcia, the seventh president of the Republic of the Philippines. Carlos P. Garcia was born in Talibon, Bohol on November 4, 1890, to Policracio Garcia and Ambrosia Polistico. He studied at the Diliman University in Dumaguite and later moved to the Philippine Law School. Where he got his law degree, he was also listed as one of the top 10 students who passed the bar examinations. His first job was a professor at the Bohol Provincial School. During the Second World War, Garcia was involved in the defense movement against Japanese. He entered politics as a representative of Bohol and National Assembly. And then, he served a congressman, a governor of Bohol, and a senator of the republic before becoming president. Garcia was also a part of the team that prepared and drafted the governing laws and policies of the United Nations. In 1945, he won a seat in the Senate and became Vice President to Ramon Magsaysay in 1933. During Garcia's short term as a Vice President, President Magsaysay assigned him as a Secretary of Foreign Affairs. Garcia assumed the presidency when President Magsaysay died in the airplane crash in March 1957. As a leader, Garen promoted a program of austerity. He said that austerity is the policy that meant temperate spending that signifies more work, more thrift, more productive investment, and more efficiency. The result was less imports and more export. This is the caption Filipino Muna. In 1961, President Election Gisdado Makapagal beat Garcia. Garcia died from heart attack on June 14, 1971. While he was still the president of the Constitutional Convention. The third one on my report is Francisco Balagtas E. D. Lacris, common known as Francisco Balagtas and also as Francisco Baltasar, was a prominent Filipino poet during the Spanish colonial period of the Philippines. He is widely considered one of the greatest Filipino literary. Is widely considered of the greatest Filipino literary laureates for his impact on Filipino literature. The famous epic Florante at Laura is regarded as his defining work. The commonly misspelled surname Baltazar was Baltazar, sometimes miscontrolled as a pen name, was a legal surname Balagtas adopted after the 1849 edict of Governor General Narciso Claveria y Saljua which mandated that the native population adopt standard Spanish or name instead of native ones. His mentor was Jose de la Cruz, otherwise known as Bo Ceseo. The last one on my report is Gabriela Selang. Gabriela Selang is perhaps the most well-known among all the Filipino heroines, but she is almost always mentioned in tandem with her husband, Chico. Since their achievements are usually written about together, many forget that she had her own fair share of heroic acts as the first Filipino to lead an uprising against a foreign power. Silang was the Silang was Ferris Ilocano warrior who assumed her husband's role as commander of rebel troops after his assassination in 1763. He held fighting forces, including the native ethnic people, to carry on the war against Spain in the home province of Ilocos, launching guerrilla attacks against Spanish garrisons, attack that caused Spanish soldiers to fear her name. For her final battles at the liberation of Vigan, she led over 2,000 men 
to go against the army of our 6,000 Spanish soldiers backed by a power for artillery. The battle proved unsuccessful for the general Soshi and the 80 remaining troops retreated to unexplored regions of Abra, where they were eventually captured. The Spanish mid here witnessed the public execution of your men before publicity, hanging the general herself in September 1763. Despite the loss, Gabriel Selang is still recognized for her immense courage in fighting for the independence of Ilocos. Trivia Gabriela Selang Gabriela Selang was widowed twice in her lifetime. At 20, she was forced to marry a wealthy old man who passed away after three years. It was after his death that she met Jigo Selang, who was a male character at the time. So this is the continuation of our topic. After Gabriela Silang biography, let's now move on to Tandang Sora's biography. Tandang Sora, 1812-1919 More than just a road in Quezon City, Tandang Sora, whose real name is Melchor Aquino, was fondly called the mother of the revolution. She was a single mother who managed the farm left by her deceased husband while raising her six children. Tandang Sora earned her nickname after taking care of Andres Bonifacio and other Katiponeros in 1896, risking her life as she provided them with food and nursed the wounded. Her bravery was best displayed after she was arrested by Spanish authorities who subjected her to growing interrogations in hopes that she would reveal the locations of the Katipunan hideout. She refused to give in and was deported to Guam under, under the decree of Governor General Ramos Blanco. Trivia about Tandang Sora Tandang Sora was the first Filipina to be featured on the Philippine Peso. Her portrait graced the 100 Peso bill from the English series from 1951 to 1966. Next is Teresa Magbanwa, 1869 to 1947. Known as a Visayan one of art, Teresa Magbanwa was originally a teacher who received a degree in education from a school in Manila. She married a wealthy businessman who owned large plots of, plants, of lands, which she helped cultivate. During this time, she developed her skills in horseback riding and marksmanship. Upon learning that her brothers joined the uprising against the Spaniards, she persuaded her uncle General Perfecto Poba. Pobiador to let her join the Katipunan's woman chapter in Panay as an experienced horse rider and marksman. The general agreed, making Magbanwa the first and only woman to lead troops in Visayas during the revolution. Her patriotic spirit helped her successfully, successfully lead a group of bola troops during the Battle of Barrio Yuting and the Battle of Sapong Hills, which were instrumental to the liberations of Iloilo City. Later on, she joined the guerrilla force in fighting against the Americans in Haro Iloilo. She continued to fight for the country's independence until the Japanese occupation when she sold all her belongings to help found the guerrilla movement. Trivia Magbanwa is one of the few who fought for the Philippines against all the country's main aggressors, Spain, the United States, and Japan. Next is Josefa Lanis Escoda, 1898-1945. Pictured as a smiling face clad in a Filipiniana outfit, Escoda is one of the two women to appear on the current series of Philippine Fest Notes. This honor does not go without merit as she was certified social worker, sobriquet, civic leader, and war heroine. As the eldest of the seven children, she had to help her mother to take care of her siblings after the death of her father in 1918, all while studying to obtain a high school teacher certificate from the University of the Philippines. Skoda went to the United States several times to further help with her social work. After graduating, she trained in social welfare at the New York School as Social Work. During this day, she also represented the Philippines in a speaking engagement in the International House and the Women's International League for the Peace. Her second visit, her second visit to the U.S., which was meant by Boy Scout training, she used to train young women's teachers from the public and private sector 
to become Girl Scout leaders. When World War II broke out, Skoda's involvement in, the, in, the, in aiding prisoner of war on his stranded women and children led, led to her arrest, torture, and eventual execution at the hands of the Japanese. Trivia As an active member of the suff- suffrage movement of the Philippines, Jose Falaris Skoda was quoted as saying that the mother woman has no longer the wife that clings, she now helps the husbands. The woman's demands for independence is motivated by their desire to help her husbands in governmental efforts which always required the modern and wisdoms of a woman. The last one is Magdalena Leones, 1921-2016. Having passed away only last 2016, Magdalena Leones remains to be one of the lesser known World War II veterans. Even though she is the only Asian woman to have been awarded a Silver Star in World War II by the United States. Born in the mountains of Kalinga, Leones was the daughter of an Evangelic missionary. Since she refused to surrender after the fall of Pataan, she was imprisoned for five months. During this time, she taught herself how to speak Nipongo a skill she utilized to help save the lives of other Filipinos captured by the Japanese. After encountering Colonel Russell Brockman of the United States Armed Forces in the Philippines, North Luzon, she agreed to serve as a special agent. Using her church connections and her Nipongo speaking skills, she was able to carry important intelligence data, vital radio parts, and medical supplies. True Japanese held theory. Though she knows that capture could result in torture and execution, she powered through and continued to serve her country, earning her the moniker of the Leones of Filipino Guerrillas Agent. Trivia Magdalena Leones was caught several times but was able to escape each time due to his wits and sweet talks. The biography of Filipina prominent gives inspirations to us as an individual. Somehow it gives feedback to us as a Filipino. It's also a time when we realize the good works of the Filipino prominent. You as a learner, you are now thinking what will be your greatest contributions as a citizen, as a young people of our country.